I'm going to work back to front um, because that's uh, when I'm working with atmosphere. You are going to want to see this today if you are an artist or a painter. Paul Cratter, what are you going to do for us today? Uh, I am going to show you how you can work out the bugs uh, before in a painting before you ever uh, get started on a bigger piece. Let's talk about the importance of these preliminary sketches because I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to execute a big studio painting and then I've gotten somewhere into it and I haven't worked out a problem and then I screw up the whole painting and start over. I, I think a lot of us have that have that issue and, and I was given a a sketchbook and uh, I started working out in oil some of these uh, issues that I had at a smaller scale and, and not risky and uh, doesn't mean you don't make mistakes or throw away a page or something but this was the first one that I uh, that I had done and I ended up doing a, a, a 12 by 24 painting of this and the composition was a little tricky and the uh, the color was a little tricky uh, at, at sunrise, and uh, I was able to work out these these issues uh, beforehand. Uh, the paint dries very very flat. It dries very flat fast when you're when you're working on oil on paper, and it kind of has a gouache look to it. So it, it, it you're not uh, it doesn't take away the fun when you're working on the on the big painting. Um, and I think that's kind of the joy in this is that it's it's fast and. Uh, it's fun when you're working on these little things, and yet you're you're resolving some issues that uh, hopefully you know when you get to the the bigger piece you you have a you have a roadmap. Yeah, I've also had situations where I've decided you know I've started doing a painting and then I'm too far along and I realize I should have made it a different shape, a different size. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity, you know, because you can really on paper like that you can just expand it out. Yeah, it, it, it's it saves you so much time and. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I usually do, it's I, I'm doing these ballpoint pen sketches uh, in a in a sketchbook, and obviously there's no color here, but there's uh, there's value, and you work out your composition, you work out your editing. Uh, these are all things that are really important to, before you ever really start your, especially a studio piece. But you can you can do this in the in the field. You can um, I I do these sketches for almost every painting now. All right. Um, as you can see, here's my photo. This is from uh, Land's End in San Francisco. It's a beautiful spot with uh, uh, these incredible cypress trees, which are so so northern California. It's a perfect sunny day. And earlier when I got here, it was a little bit foggy and the, the fog burned off. And then I took some photographs. I want to change this back to a foggy-ish day. And yet there's still some sunlight. And I want to push these trees pretty far back and then focus on this verticality. Um, this, uh, I think originally this was a, a, a horizontal photograph, but I want the, the verticality of these trees uh, to be very, very apparent. So that's why this is a, 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 a almost a two to one format. So I'm going to start in the background. I'm using oils. Uh, this, so I'm going to make kind of a foggy-ish, yellowish um, color uh, for this fog. And I don't see that uh, in the photograph, but this is from experience of painting outdoors. This is, this is what, I, um, what I saw and kind of the feeling that I had. And I think it, it's a little more indicative maybe of San Francisco uh, and coastal regions of uh, being very, uh, the fog is a very natural uh, air conditioner here and a wonderful, uh, a wonderful mood uh, for these, uh, this kind of painting. So hey, Paul, can you uh, get your canvas just a little closer in there? Okay. How, how's that? Oh, that looks good. All right. Keep going. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to work back to front um, because that's uh, when I'm working with atmosphere. It's um, uh, it's a good way to judge uh, values uh, 
and make something like these really distant trees back here um, fade off in the distance and not get too uh, too dark. Uh, and, and so for me, this is this is a, a pretty fast way uh, working back to front, which most people don't do that. Now, how about when you're out in the field? Do you normally do back to front? Uh, most of the time I, in the field, I'm working uh, with um, my shadow colors, shadow values first. And when I'm, uh, when I'm out in the field, one of the questions I always ask myself is, what's going to change the most, the fastest that I need to capture? And so uh, with atmosphere, it, it, especially in California, we have the fog along the coast. Um, you can have a very foggy day and uh, in a couple of hours, if it's mid morning, all of a sudden it starts to to burn off. And um, if you like that fog, then that that's you're, you're trying to capture that um, that moment and that that atmosphere. And so that's why I, I do that first. So I've, what I've done is I've, I've got this nice whitish. There's a little bit of yellow in there this uh, on this paper it's very very dry um and i can even put my finger down and the paint is not coming off like it would on a on any kind of uh panel uh, it's really absorbing it yeah and which is neat it's, it's yeah. just just something a little bit different i'm mixing a little bit of blue a little cobalt a little um what else is in there um uh, like an azure blue and I'm just going to kind of scumble that in in a few places as if the blue sky is starting to come through a little bit. Uh -huh. And this is a, uh, go ahead, Eric, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I was just going to say, uh, Charles White always talks about it. You put a little bit of blue and it gives hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hope is a strategy. So you kind of got a, the look here is, is as if the, within moments, it's going to turn into a really sunny, a sunny sky. Right. Grab my paper towel here. And you can soften some of this, um, clean the brush just a little bit, but I can go back and work this very soft edge up against here. Don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to fuss fuss with that. Now, my um, this back tree here is a little bit of, of purple. I've I've got a on my palette. I've got a, a a king's blue. I don't use that all that often, but it's a nice um, cool uh, purple that I usually use as a kind of a modifier to. Uh, uh, to make like a cool gray. Well, and it goes up nice against yellow too. Purple yeah, and yellow. that's the, that's the whole, you're, you've painted before, Eric, you know what you're talking about. Not like you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you have another job that might be a little more pressing. I don't know. <laughs> so there's a suggestion of, of some cypress trees back in the, in the distance. And now I'm going to work on, these just really quickly just to suggest it a little more purple a little blue the camera's not painting down so i can describe this just a little bit and i'm going to warm it up just a little bit so we're, we're talking about a, a value maybe one value lighter a darker My temptation, I would have probably made that a lot darker, and this works so much better. The I think when you're, you can always, adding more um, atmosphere, I think is, is better than making it feel more like a clear day. You can, adding more distance just makes your, your paintings just a little bit more evocative and uh, not just a, a perfectly uh, clear day. I would agree with that. 
there's a, uh, I was at a, a show and there was a, uh, a painting by um, Sam Hyde Harris. Mm. Or no, it was, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Percy Gray. Percy Gray. Incredible. And the, the, the quote was, um, you should have been here yesterday when it was clear. And he says, that's why I'm here today. It's because <laughs> there was, there was a lot more atmosphere. It was, it was a more overcast day. And that's, that's what he liked a little bit, a little bit more. That was one of the big inspirations, both Percy Gray and Sam Hyde Harris uh, mm -hmm. in, in my own, my own work. Me too. All right. So now you've got, you've got one, two, uh, as far as um, th these trees back here, are really really feel like they're way back in the in the distance and you can always come up put some of these little sky holes in here this if this bank of trees would go all the way through here you would see in some of these like tree trunks that overlap and there's some areas negative shapes in here we call those sky holes um, that starts to create a little, a little bit of interest and you don't want a lot of these. That's, that's a, um, I think the, to suggest it is, is, uh, is what you're looking for. I'm going to put a little yellow. So what's the key to sky holes? Isn't it make them a, a lot darker than you think they should be? A little bit. They should not be quite as light as the, as the sky. Uh, you, you, you don't want to notice them. You don't want to, it to be such a big a big difference so i'm going to make uh i'm going to paint the foliage in here i'm using a a sap green a little bit of red a little bit of blue i'm going to put down how does that look i want it a little darker same brush i have a um paper towel that i'm i clean off the brush a little bit uh, as I'm as I'm working and I like I don't want my brushes to be all perfect I, I like them when they're just a, a little bit beaten up and I also like I don't totally clean them ex except when you get into the sky region uh, it's very easy to contaminate your your painting uh, your sky and so I usually at that time either put new paint, I sometimes put new paint out, sometimes I, um, uh, but I certainly clean the brush because uh, it's very easy to bring in a, uh, another color and, and drag it into the sky and just make it very kind of unpure like. So starting to take shape you can see how much how forward this this comes from the uh from of course the sky but that this is quite a bit darker than the the foliage in here i haven't put any light in the tra trees yet we'll just see how how time's going i want to try to normally i put a little little light in here but we're we're just trying to get the gist of getting a, a painting done all right, I'm going to put a, the trunk color is going to be kind of a, a brownish color, but a little bit on the cool side. I usually do not have brown on my, any kind of uh, earth tone colors on my palette, but just to speed up things I did for today. If you just tuned in, Paul Cratter is giving giving us a demonstration on how to work out the, the kinks in a painting before you actually lay it down on a big canvas. So he's actually painting on a piece of paper with oil paint. It is very fun. It, the paint, the paper just absolutely soaks up the, uh, the color. And so uh, the idea here is that you're not you're not spending a great deal of time trying to make, you could still have a very beautiful painting, 
but you can you're trying to get this this color thought down um, so that when you go back to the studio and say, okay, here's I want to do a big studio piece for a, an exhibit, museum, whatever it happens to be, and not be so intimidated by, oh gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a really different color palette than I, you know, than I normally do or whatever. This is the place to kind of ex experiment with that. Paul has an entire video out on painting trees. He is like the tree master. And, and I know that makes you, uh, you're such a humble guy that makes you embarrassed, but uh, uh, he's got oh, two videos. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just two videos you. out. Gush, this is gush one of about the, me all you want, Eric. This is, the, this is the place to do it. A terrific seller called Mastering Trees. And then he has another one where he goes into more depth about painting landscapes called Mastering Landscapes. They're all available at Paint Tube. Dot TV, where we have hundreds of art instruction videos, and but none better than Paul Cratter. No, oh, you're sweet. Thank you. I was a uh, an illustrator for 22 years before I um, got into plein air painting and landscapes, and um, I did do portrait work. I did a lot of sport work. And these now, I, I'm still interested in it. I haven't done a portrait in so long. Um, but this, these are my portraits now. These are my people. And uh, thing, trees like cypress are, they, they have a lot of character. And um, you just, you have to look at them that way. And you can, you can make them look older. You can make them look younger. You can give them unique qualities. Uh, and that's what I look for. You can already see how, how quickly you can get this one, two, and three kind of step feel for a, for a painting in a relatively short time. Uh, I'm going to put a little texture in the tree because I want, I want it to have the, some of the bark because it is, they are unique, these cypress, and get some uh, little striations and stuff. And I just mixed a little, little darker purple and grade it down using a, uh, a little bit of yellowish tone. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. And of course, you know, working at this speed, you're, I'm not getting too many nuances, but it doesn't, doesn't take much just to suggest that. Uh, for your viewers, Eric, you were saying you have giveaways. I'm not quite sure how I'll do this when I look at the um, questions that people ask. Um, I'll, I'll respond to all those. Um, whatever, whatever people want to know about this painting and technique and, and whatnot. But I also will give this, I'm going to, I will finish this painting a little bit more off, off camera because it's, it is a little bit rough, but I'm going to give it away too. Um, I just, it's, it's not that much invested in time. So I will respond to one, one particular question and say, okay, you get, if you want this painting, I'm, I'm going to give it away. Okay, well, put your comments in the comments section. That's a great incentive. Okay, so there's a little bit of, of texture on there. How are we doing for time, Eric? We're doing fine, Paul. Okay, good. The helicopter's not waiting to, to take us away. <laughs> no, the men in the little white coats are waiting to take you away. <laughs> Any travel plans for you? Yeah, I'm going to take a vacation and go down to San Miguel de Allente uh, here uh, right after Plein Air Live. Good for you. You're going to paint or go on vacation? Well, to me, painting is a vacation, <laughs> so I'll, I'll take my paints. I'm not sure. I may just, uh, I may go minimal, go watercolor or gouache or something. Not sure. Yeah. Good for you. We are.
far. We lost you there, Paul, for a second. Your voice went away. Oh, we're going to, uh, in June, we're going to Africa, back to Africa again. Oh, you love doing animal portraits. Oh, gosh. It's it's so much fun. And the landscapes are, are really fun, too. And so that's what I'll be, you know, when we're not on safari and have some uh, downtime, uh, that's I will be uh, doing some gouache paintings. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting to add a little bit of darkness um, in some of this uh, foliage, some plant life that um, will help uh, give you some volume and, and a little bit of light. That's also but, making the tree trunk look not as dark now that you get that other dark. In yeah. It. Yeah. You've got, now you've got the, one of the, the goals when you're, when you're painting, you know, whether it's live outside in the studio, doing a sketch like this is covering the entire canvas. And sometimes uh, if the light's really changing, you've, you've got to capture some things, but this is right now, this is really when I, I especially tell my students and whatnot for myself, step back, what, what stands out? What do I need to, uh, to improve, to work on, um, that's you know sometimes you go okay everything looks great sometimes you go no i need I, this needs to be a little darker i i need a little more now it's time to get some of these lights on here so um standing back from your canvas is a huge huge uh part of uh of being able to analyze what you're you know what's going on with your painting And it doesn't matter if, even if you if you sit in a chair, that's fine. Get up though out of your chair. You you've got to get some uh, some distance to be able to see what's happening. So adding a little bit of uh, yellow greenish light to the tops of these these plants here. Now there's a huge distance now from from this um, the difference in the photograph here. And the atmosphere that's created in this painting is, I think, far more interesting. This is going to be worth millions to whoever, whoever I give this to. Billions. <laughs> Let's put a little light along the edge. It's, um, I know we're shooting a live video here, live broadcast. Um, and I, it's very easy for me to talk when you're, when I'm doing a painting, not everybody can, can do that, but there usually is some point where you're, you are concentrating and you're, you, you take a moment and okay, there's, there's going to be some, a quiet period. It's like, um, You've, you've got to be able to concentrate to be able to say, to, you know, to, to work on some little, little area, little nuance. We um, understand. Yeah. Okay, good. So just putting a little, little light here. Yeah. Your finger is, is another element to another, another brush. It's okay, nothing fabulous yet, but it's getting there. Okay, let's put a little light in the tops of the trees as well. Okay, let's. Grab a brush, Eric. So I'm adding this a little sap green, a little bit of red, a little India yellow orange. And I don't want a big value jump here. Cypress trees have some really unique 
qualities. The trunks can uh, be very, very thick. Uh, they can grow very straight. They can, they usually have some very angular arms, branches to them. Uh, but the tops of them are pretty, can be fairly straight and flat at the top. And I do a lot of kind of this sideways horizontal brush strokes to indicate some of the uh, the foliage on it. I'm not trying to obviously paint every every uh, leaf on here, but now I'm gonna go just a tad bit darker. Give just a little more contrast with this. The foliage, the shadow side was not quite dark enough for me. And you can kind of create some sky holes. By, you don't have to put the, 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 uh, the sky. You can work back and forth between softening some of these edges with your brush. I'm kind of almost dry brushing this. And then I will come back with the sky and dot in some, some sky holes here and there, just so there's some interest um, in these in this mass of, of foliage. I usually put in the main trunks and the main branches, and at the end then I'll come back and put in a few more, more delicate, delicate branches kind of on top of that sky. And these can kind of fade. I'm, I'm lifting the brush kind of at the end and dragging it so it's not, uh, you can see this, there's almost a skipped line so that that branch is not, it feels like the, the light is affecting it, that it's, it's bleaching it out maybe just a little bit, if that makes, makes sense. Makes perfect sense to me. That's our goal. You're a good teacher. I think that's why your video sold so well. Uh, well, thank you. It was it was fun to do. I remember when when I was doing it, uh, and the uh, the producer. I remember stopping at one point, and I said, "Am I talking too much?" You know, and he says, "No, that's the whole idea with the with the video is, uh, you know, to, to be giving out you know as much information as you can in the, in the time frame." And uh, I I am fortunate that I can talk and kind of entertain and, 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 and give out information uh, all at the same time without having to stop and, and think. <laughs> think and tell jokes? Be, uh, occasionally. <laughs> no, I'm not a joke teller. I just like, I, I like. You're to a be funny light. guy. You like, I like you to like be comedy. lighthearted. I like to be lighthearted. I mean, art is fun. And is it a struggle? Yes. Is it, um, every painting has a, has something that, you're you're working on you're going oh gosh i don't know if i can resolve that i i hope this i hope this works um and yet every every painting is is fun you know there's i've i've been frustrated i've i've thrown paintings across the room i've destroyed destroyed paintings i've scraped them down but they're still they're still really fun fun to do Okay, so again, this is where uh, uh, stepping back, looking at it, and going, okay, what what needs to what needs to be done? Uh, I'm pretty happy with most of what's happening here. I'm going to maybe put a little stronger light on the uh, the the tree, uh, the light side of the tree. Not a lot, but maybe just a little indicate some of the, the texture of the tree. 
Well, it also creates so much more form. Yeah. You want it to wrap around. Normally, I, I, whether I have time or not, I, I might put a little reflected light on the back side of the, of the tree to, so it does feel roundish. Might as well do that now. Let's. So I made up a, used a little of that King's Blue. Into that, the trunk color, that brownish, ochery, raw umberish looking color. I must have a, a I don't know what that, those white dots are. That's, that's just going to be texture. It's a little bit of wrapping this around. Always come back with a dry brush and get rid of that unwanted texture. The other thing I might do, and if, as a former illustrator, and sometimes it's, I'm using a line quality to kind of outline the tree, make it just a little bit more graphic. My wife doesn't, who's also an artist, doesn't always like it when I do this, but hey, I'm the boss on this painting. Well, a lot of painters did that historically. Yeah. Sometimes it's even, even somebody like Bouguereau, he'd put a very, very fine line, you know, against the edge of a face where, where you had dark meets light. Yeah. It's just a drawing for me is so important. And if it emphasizes, the the shape a little bit better um you know i'm all i'm all for it now i can i can also come back i'm going to play around with this the negative the the negative shape of that um of this tree by painting a little bit more in this um uh, i'm trying to mix a color and talk at the same time and i'm struggling um Here's the, this tree back here, this group of trees. And I'm just going to get a little more opaque, but I can, I can paint up to that line, make it a little softer and a little less uh, pronounced, let's say. And a lot of times when I'm painting, drawing, um, to help you draw shapes better, it's to paint, the, draw the negative shape. And so to emphasize this, the, uh, the tree, if I don't like the line quality that I had, I don't have to redraw that line. I can go back to that, this triangle shape and re, repaint that, redesign that shape instead. And so I go, I go back and forth quite a bit between the positive shape and the negative shape to, to achieve, you know, drawing a little bit better, more refined, whatever it happens to be. Beautiful composition. Thank you. I think it just, this, this scene just screamed out, you know, to, to be a vertical a vertical painting and I've done a version of a couple different versions of this uh, before and um, that when, when I went out there that was uh, the first couple of times I did I did do two uh, two by one uh, a 12 20 24 12 and a uh, 10 by uh, 20 by 10 painting and um, you know, that was such a, a fun, fun composition. Then when I went out another couple weeks later, I did a, a 12 by 12 version because I, I wanted to try something different and not just rely, oh, that worked. So I'm going to keep doing it again and again. I, I don't like to do that. I like to, 
you know, change it up a little bit and see what what you can do that's a little bit different. There are some trunks in here. We're doing okay on time? Yep, you're doing fine. Great. That helicopter is just waiting for you? I had no helicopter here. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully I'll never have to <laughs> have to use a helicopter again. Oh, that's Except, right. You 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 should tell the story while you're painting. Okay. Um, so we went backpacking uh, Eastern Sierras the last day coming out. Um, we were away. We were on a marked trail, but not many people use it. And I we were nine miles away uh, from the from the camp. And I slipped and fell and stuck my leg out to stop my fall. And I dislocated my kneecap. And I was with um, uh, Bill Cohn and uh, Carol Marie and Lori uh, Putnam and Susie Baker and just surrounded by beautiful women. And uh, Ernesto Nemesio was there and they, uh, they called a, they had, Susie Baker had a satellite radio uh, and they put an SOS and, and uh, rescued me by by helicopter. So that, that was quite the quite the story. So I'm going back. I'm going to switch brushes. That one is just a, a tad bit dirty. And it's like I said earlier, it's very easy to contaminate a sky. And I'm just going back to to this um, uh, to the foggy area and. I'm putting in a little bit of sky holes. I will up along this edge. But the paint just absolutely soaks into this this paper. They do make oil paper. They do. I I've, I've used that a little bit and it's a it's a great um a, um, I think is it Arches, I think makes it. Um, um, I, I know that um, Kyle Richardson at Rembrandt makes it. I don't know. Okay. Arches might make it too. So I'm going to go back. Casson, Casson, Casson. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's, it's just fun to experiment. Uh, there's a lot of people doing, you know, gouache painting. Scott Christensen's doing some wonderful, um, they're finished paintings, but I know he's using them as, um, as studies for, for larger, larger paintings. And there's a, an incredible joy in, in doing these things. Sergio Lopez is doing them. And um, I'm sure there's lots of other, other folks, but they're, Quash is a wonderful kind of funny, funny, tricky medium, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful medium, especially to, to experiment with the, uh, you know, before you do a, a final painting, it's. Uh, well, and it's a lot easier to travel with too. Yeah. So I'm putting a handful of little, dots and dashes and like eric said that you know you want to be careful that it doesn't get too light there's um when you're getting into this into the foliage here i'm i just use my thumb to um take some of the paint off so it, it's not quite as as opaque let's say and and um uh the color kind of breathes a little bit uh, um so it's not quite so stark. And again, those are things that as you back up and look at your painting, you go, oh, if, 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 they, if the, if the um, sky holes really stand out, they're just a little bit, sometimes they're too sharp. Um, and sometimes they're a little bit too, um, too light. That's looking good. It's okay, boss. Yep. We are going to have to wrap it up here though in a minute. Yeah. I'm, I'm right on, right on schedule. So one of your, 
viewers is going to get this and I'll I'll look at the the questions that uh, people have for me and get back to everybody but um you know it's th there wasn't a lot of time invested in this I think someone will maybe get something out of owning well it's a beautiful painting and and uh, I have paintings done by some some pretty significant artists that are on paper a lot of the Russians did that because yeah. they didn't have anything else so uh, what we'll do is we'll just have, uh, he will randomly pick from the comments. So make sure you leave a comment. We also are giving away in the comments uh, today uh, a plein air magazine apron. So you'll have an opportunity to potentially win that. We'll be picking that too. So um, will, you, will, we'll, you hands, will you sign that apron? No, I won't. <laughs> that, what, what, <laughs> that's what's going to make it so valuable. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's going to be valuable. <laughs> well, the problem is that it's going to be shipped from Florida and I'm not there. So they'd have to ship it here and then but if yeah. if if they want me to sign it badly enough, they can bring it to the plenary convention. Okay. I'll I'll sign it there. And you can sign it too. A lot of people bring something and have all the faculty members yeah, sign it, which is kind of fun. Okay. I think if we're running out of time, that's, that's all right. probably... Why don't you, because a lot of people didn't see you in the beginning, let's see if we can get you on camera and uh, and that way we can see you, see your beautiful... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of scary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we're, our guest today is part of Paul Cratter. <laughs> okay, quit painting. Quit uh, painting. I know. I, I know. I'm just going to put a few little, you know, little flowers in there oh nice okay very nice yep i'll we can always do that do that later anyway thank you thank you so much it was great to uh great to be on camera with you again and, and get to chat and do uh do a pretty nice painting i'm pretty happy thank you paul it. it'd be nice if everybody could see your face but we understand and uh so uh what a wonderful job oh there he is here I am. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank All right. you so much.